Welcome folks to Vintage Video's latest What's New Film. With Remembrance Day coming up on November the 11th, I thought we would take a look at some of the many feature films and documentaries we have on World War I and II. Let's start off with a very difficult Alan Ladd movie to get called The Deep Six. He plays a Quaker who is conscripted into the U.S. Navy and this provides for him a dilemma which he doesn't think that he can solve. Next, one of James Mason's best, where he plays the most successful spy in World War II, the Five Fingers. This one I have been waiting for personally for a long time to come out on DVD, Men of the Fighting Lady, starring Frank Lovejoy and Van Johnson. The story of Panther jets off an aircraft carrier in the Korean War. I cannot tell you how good this film is. One of Billy Wilder's best, Five Graves to Cairo, where Eric von Stroheim plays Rommel. It's more, it's a spy film, but it's also got some, some heavy overtones on uh, almost like a, a crime movie. The only World War II movie that Sam Peckinpah ever did. Cross of Iron, again starring James Mason, James Colburn. National Geographic put together a documentary called 42 Ways to Kill Hitler. Most scholars had no idea the number of attempts that were made on Hitler's life. So much information has come to light in the last little while, hence this documentary from National Geographic's 42 Attempts on Hitler's Life. Next we have three documentaries, The Third Reich in Color and Japan at War in Color. What makes these documentaries so outstanding is that every bit of footage was actually shot in color and has not been colorized since the end of the war. The Third Reich in Color, a two volume set, Japan at War in Color. William Holden and the Counterfeit Trader, an industrialist who is really almost blackmailed into spying for the Allies. Vintage Video usually does not carry more recent movies, but I have made an exception with these two. The first one is called For Those We Love. Made in 2010, it tells the story of a group of young men who are really conscripted into being kamikaze pilots. The final raid at the end of the movie has to be seen to be believed. The next one done by the same studio in the same year called the Yamato shows what life was like for the Japanese sailors on the largest battleship in the world. And following that, fabulous documentaries, Sinking the Supership. This outlines the search and the final sinking of the Yamato. Next we have one of Jimmy Cagney's best, Captains of the Clouds, filmed entirely in Ontario, up in the Muskokas, here in Toronto, the only part of the film that was done in California were the sequences having to do with the special effects. Cagney loved Ontario so much that he bought a cottage up in Lake Joseph and it was finally sold after his death through his estate. Wonderful movie, Captain of the Clouds. Documentary on the Dam Busters. We also carry the feature film starring Richard Todd. Sony Archive has just released the Hammer production of Camp on Blood Island. When this film was released in the late 50s, it created a tremendous amount of controversy because it showed how badly the British Australian prisoners were treated in the Japanese POW camps. The restored Russian World War II epic, The Fall of Berlin. This was a gift for Stalin's 50th birthday, and since the Russians occupied the east part of Berlin, they were able to use the Reichstag, the ruins of the Reichstag, and they had all of the German planes that they captured and tanks. When they say epic, they mean epic. From the German Ministry of Propaganda, Stukas directed by Carl Ritter. The only film that I'm aware of that has 
anything to do with Stukas and because it was filmed during the war they had unlimited use of them. New documentary called Hitler's Children. This outlines what happened to the children of what is referred to as Hitler's henchmen. What happened to their children after the war. Next we have Heroes, perhaps the finest documentary I have ever seen about the making of the greatest war movies ever filmed. Stalingrad. Foreign movie done by the people who brought us Das Boot. This perhaps is the best of all of the depictions of what is considered to be the most violent and destructive battle in the history of mankind. Pearl, a little known miniseries starring Robert Wagner about the events leading up to the attack of the Japanese on Pearl Harbor on December 7th, 1941. And finally for the singles, this is quite a moving documentary called The Guinea Pig Club. And it tells the story of Sir Archibald Mackendo or Mackendo, a New Zealand plastic surgeon who worked on the terrible burns of pilots during the Battle of Britain. It's, this documentary is not for the faint of heart, but it may be, personally, it may be the most moving documentary I've ever seen in my life. Next we have Baba Black Sheep, starring Robert Conrad. What I've always liked about this 60s television series is the unlimited use that they had of Corsairs. Tells the story of Papa Boynton and his renegade flyers who could not fit in anywhere else, so they sent them down to him and he made them into a fighting unit. Not to make light of war, Hogan's Heroes, the complete set. And I'm down to my last combat set. This is undoubtedly the finest war series ever done for television, starring the late, great Vic Morrow. Five seasons, all restored combat. To end our look at material having to do with World War I and World War II, you may not be aware that Vintage Video carries books. There's a series of three, Berlin from 1929 to 1945. These books come from Germany, and the astounding thing about them is that every photograph is in color. Not colorized, but original color. And... The best book I have ever seen on Rommel's Africa Corps. Now, to end, some non-military related DVDs which have just come in. Volume 4, the final set of The Bowery Boys. 12 feature films on four discs. I was able to locate what has now been discontinued, the only Audie Murphy television series he ever did, Whispering Smith. The complete four film Billy Jack collection. The fourth and final season of The Big Valley. And last but not least, and this one's a lot of fun, 50 fabulous films of the 40s. It's a fabulous set. Well, that's it. Thank you. And can you believe it? The next time we're going to get together, it'll be about goodies for Christmas. Bye.